Hey everybody, my name is Dante Duval, and welcome to my channel. On this channel, I'm going to be discussing some topics that interest me, primarily dark, heavy music, horror films, and various creepy stories or media I find on the internet. I'd like to give a shout out to creators Plague Moth and Knight for inspiring to make this video, and we'll be linking their channels in the description. This video will be the first part of a series that I call my Not Safe for Life albums. As someone who enjoys dark, extreme music, I've found some pretty depraved stuff over the years. Going through Metal Archives, RateYourMusic.com, and YouTube, I've gone on a bit of a deep dive in search of some disturbing, unsettling albums that leave an impact on me. While a lot of Not Safe for Life content tends to structure itself in tiers, commonly in the diagram of an iceberg, I'm going to do this a bit more freely and just talk about albums that stand out to me without any particular ranking. Before we start, I would like to give a content warning that themes of mental illness, suicide, and violence will be discussed in this video, so please be mindful if you're going to continue watching. Because YouTube will likely give me a copyright strike if I play the music I'm discussing in this video, I'll instead be linking the albums in the description if you're interested in hearing them. Now, without further ado, let's discuss the first three albums on my Not Safe for Life music list. The first album I would like to discuss is A Day of Nights by a band known as Battle of Mice. This is actually an all-time favorite album of mine and has consistently left me chills since I discovered it back in high school. The music of Battle of Mice could be summed up either as post-metal or atmospheric sludge metal. Spacious low-end riffs, crisp clean productions, gloomy clean guitar or synth passages, and shouted or gravelly clean sung vocals are commonplace for this niche of music. The band was formed by vocalist Julie Christmas and guitarist Josh Graham after meeting on tour with their respective bands. The two ended up in a long distance relationship with Christmas living in New York City and Graham living in Los Angeles. Joined by Tony Maimone on bass and Joel Hamilton on drums, the four piece ultimately collaborated on and recorded this album A Day of Nights as well as two other tracks for a split album with the band Yezu. Throughout their time in the band, the relationship between Julie and Josh supposedly became very tumultuous and volatile. Julie herself even stated, the sonic philosophy of the band reflects a huge primal range of emotion. Love, lust, jealousy, whiskey, and blind rage. At the time of recording A Day of Nights, the tension between Julie and Josh became so severe that the two could no longer be in the same room together. So all the instruments ended up being tracked one day, and Julie went in at a separate time to record vocals. At the time of recording vocals, Julie delivered all of her lines at one take with no pre-written lyrics. With her lines being completely dry and high in the mix, she sings, screams, shrieks, whispers, and everything in between with topics of stalking, violence, depression, and mental instability. Some deeper context that makes the story all the more disturbing is that track 6 on the album, titled At the Base of the Giant's Throat, features a 911 call Julie made at the time that she was being attacked by an ex-partner in her home. In addition to this, before the final track was recorded, one of the members of the band supposedly fell down a flight of stairs, which is reflected in the lyrics of that final song, titled Cave of Spleen. Here's just a brief excerpt from the lyrics of Cave of Spleen. I chipped my tooth. I have a window in my skull. Wrapped up in explosive glass, the voices sing beneath below. My mouth is full of blood, but I saved some for you. All my copper glass is rusted. This is not the end of the last word. To call A Day of Nights an angry or upsetting album would be a massive understatement. With the powerful instrumentation and Julie's chaotic, almost manic sounding vocals and disturbing lyrics, you can really sense that the music was created in a very hostile and turbulent time for the members of the band. The next album I'm going to talk about is Mortal Entrenchment and Requiem by a band called Malvary. Malvary were a black metal band from Canada who were active throughout the late 90s. They recorded a demo back in 1998, then recorded this lone full-length album before disbanding the next year. To those who aren't familiar with black metal, think very aggressive, hellish, shrill-sounding extreme metal with a lot of tremolo picking, blasting drums, and harsh, high-ranged vocals that are typically screamed or shrieked. While a lot of bands within this niche are focused on anti-religious or occult themes, there are also bands such as Malvary who instead focus on lyrical themes of depression, mental illness, or suicide. Bands who fall under this particular umbrella are usually summed up as depressive black metal or DSBM. Mortal Entrenchment and Requiem is a very chaotic, spastic sounding album. 
The arrangements drastically switch between being more down-tempo and morose to furious high-tempo blast beats, sometimes almost sounding as if it were improvised in the studio. The vocals consist of utterly depraved sounding shrieks and screams, and while I did find lyrics for one of the songs, a majority of the vocal performance is practically unintelligible. And no, I'm not generally one of those folks who say, you can't even understand what they're saying, when it comes to harsh vocals. Tragically, vocalist Amerle Chatier would end up committing suicide in 1999, shortly after the release of the album. This marked the end of the band, leaving his disturbed and unhinged performance on the album as his legacy. The last album I'll be discussing for part one is titled Ground Zero by a project known as Monuments to Sorrow. Monuments to Sorrow was an anonymous one-person project from Texas whose only release was a 35-minute EP released in 2007 entitled Ground Zero. As far as I know, the EP was never distributed physically and there was no artwork for it. The only images we have are of the band's sole member wearing a creepy white Halloween mask. Ground Zero consists of a single 35-minute track of noisy, droney, and ugly sounding Funeral Doom. For those who aren't familiar with this particular niche, Funeral Doom typically consists of very slow, heavy, sustained guitars, minimal, spacious drumming, typically harsh vocals that are deeply growled or screamed, and a very depressive, apocalyptic atmosphere. The approach taken here is especially raw, lo-fi, and gritty, with super fuzzy, shrill-sounding guitars, dissonant riffs, and growled vocals buried deep in the mix. When reading the lyrics to the track, the concept details a story based on the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York City on September 11th, 2001. The lyrics come from the point of view of a person who was inside one of the buildings at the time of the attack, suffocating and burning alive as they are crushed underneath the rubble. The absolutely horrifying concept paired with the unsettling and dissonant music makes the experience sound particularly hellish. The last few minutes of the song consist of a 911 recording of one of the real-life victims of the attack played over a really ominous clean guitar melody. To read just a few passages from Ground Zero, All around, the cries of those similarly damned, wretched moans, the screams of banshees, ghastly wails, the tortured, piercing shrieks of children. A small ray of light breaks the darkness, a tender beam of salvation, a chorus of angelic voices calls for us. We, the damned, I cry for them, I claw at the walls, begging forgiveness, and the voices fade, ignorant to my ash-laden pleas. Imprisoned, I lay my head, for the first solemn sleep of my new eternity. I actually have not been able to find this song in years. I came across it over 10 years ago on MySpace, and it was cut into several different songs on their page. I don't know if there are any other means that you can find the song now, as I have not been able to find it on YouTube or on any streaming or torrent sites. Whether you find the concept and delivery of Ground Zero to be scary and disturbing like I do, or if you just find it tacky and in poor taste, it's definitely a not safe for life album that will have you saying yikes either way. So this concludes part one of my not safe for life album list. I'll be making further parts to this series, but if you're curious ahead of time, I also have a list on RateYourMusic.com of my chosen selections as well as suggested albums from other users. I'll be linking that below as well. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram or TikTok to show me some love. I look forward to sharing more creepy content with you all, and we'll be seeing you all very soon. Bye!